Hi everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Turin's Adventures. This time we are taking a look at the demo for Kathy Rain the Director's Cut, which I was recently told about. It's literally only been out for a couple of weeks, I think, the demo for this one. Uh, Sunny Vaisar told me, so thank you for pointing this out for me. Kathy Rain is something that I've been meaning to play on the channel for a long time. Um, and the fact that the demo for the Director's Cut is out means that I get to give it a try and uh, show it off to you guys as well, which is excellent news. So let's jump in with a new game. I have no idea what to expect from this, but I've heard it's got pretty good reviews and stuff, so here we go. Ugh, just my luck. Voice acted as well. I like the pixel art, it's very, very good. Ah, oh, yeah, six cool. I pulled you over, ma'am? Uh, okay, here we go. It's right. You need directions to the nearest donut shop. It's got to be to compliment me on my driving, right? That ticket quote of yours wasn't going to fill itself. Let's, uh, let's be nice with a bit of sarcasm. It's got to be to compliment me on my driving, right? Trying to be a smart ass, ma'am? Nobody likes a smart ass. Could have talked about the donuts, you know how so. fast you were going? Uh, yes. <laughs> and? Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> the smart ass playing dumb. Aren't you just a perfect blend of obnoxious? <laughs> I guess so. Look, I'm really sorry, officer. I'm in a huge hurry to this thing, and the road has been empty for miles. You know how it is. Well, what I do know is that the speed limit here is 65. I clocked you at 77. You're getting a ticket. Fine. Oh. To the movies? <laughs> I prefer horror flicks. Uh oh. Regular comedian, huh? Don't quit your day job. Ah, oh dear. Right, good start to the game then. <laughs> Traffic ticket already. Ooh. Where's this? Looks like a graveyard. I like the atmosphere in this already, though. It's very good. Well, here we are after a 40 minute drive and a harebrained speeding ticket. <laughs> All right, uh. God, I really need a smoke. Does anyone object? Guess not. <laughs> Deadly or cruel? She's quite funny, I'll give her that. I like the humor. Okay, use the left mouse button to walk and interact with objects. We can do that. Maybe don't flick the cigarette on the floor though. That's how um, wildfires start. So, oh, okay, we've got a notebook, a stun gun, some cigarettes, and a lighter. Uh, let's I'll have a look at the notebook. Clues, in this as I find them. clues. So we're doing some sort of detective work, then it seems. No time for that now. I'm late for the funeral. Oh, okay. So we're here for a funeral. Oh, here we go. Here's the funeral. We are gathered here today to honor a person of great integrity, a pillar of the community. And a decorated war hero. His name was Joseph Irving Rain. We all remember his warm heart, his compassion, and his eagerness to help others. His passing, while our loss, is surely heaven's gain. Now we entrust our brother Joseph to God's mercy. We commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. In sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our frail bodies so that they may be conformed to his glorious body, who died, was buried, and rose again for us. It's got a very sad atmosphere, to hasn't him it? Be glory forever. Amen. It's the one thing I will say so far you can really feel emotions in every scene. It's good. Oh, Kathy, you big baby, just talk to her. So is this maybe... Because our name's Kathy Rain, right? So is this like our, our mum and dad or something? Oh, look at the town in the background, that's lovely. All right, let's talk, I guess. Uh, excuse me, Mrs. Rain? Have we met, hon? You look strangely familiar. It's me. It's Catherine. Catherine who? You don't recognize me? I guess it's been a while. I might be a bit taller than you remember me. Kathy? Bless my soul. 
Look at you all grown up. Oh, how I wish Joseph could see you now finally coming home. Let's hope he can, wherever he is. A comforting thought, dear. Lord, how long has it been? Ten years? Fifteen? Fifteen sounds about right. I was six when Mom took me away. Goodness. We have some catching up to do then. <laughs> I want to know everything. Listen, I'm not quite ready to leave yet, but... Why don't you join me at the house in half an hour? Sure, I'd love to. I passed it on my way here. It shouldn't be too hard to find. I'll see you soon then. I'm so glad you found your way back home. I can't wait for us to have a chance to talk. Same here. See you in a bit. I'm really invested in the story already. I think it's very, very good. Um, new location added. Uh, so... Oh, the music's great as well. I never thought I'd return to this place. Honestly, I'm I'm really loving this so far. The family mausoleum. It says price. The family must have been fairly rich. Those things don't come cheap. Yeah, everything about this is great. The art style, the soundtrack. I'm sorry for your loss. Thanks. If you wish to find God, the Church of the Holy Trinity is always open to you. Is that so? Here, have a brochure. It's never too late to turn away from a path of sin. Uh, and what makes you so sure I'm on a sinful path? Uh, wouldn't you say that prejudice is, a bit, is but a small step from the seven big ones? You're not familiar with the concept of a lost cause, are you? No sin, but what am I supposed to do for fun? <laughs> oh dear, let's, let's uh, go for this one. And what makes you so sure I'm on a sinful path, Father? Wouldn't you say that prejudice is but a small step from the seven big ones? I simply meant that we are all sinful creatures, child. I hope to see you at the church. Don't get your hopes up, buddy. I'll pray for you. I wish you comfort in this time of grief. Well, that's nice, I guess. Alright, off we go. So we're going to the house then, I imagine? This is great though, I can, you know, like I said, I've been meaning to play this for ages on the channel. Um, th this is going to be a one-off video for now, but I'm definitely going to revisit this later on. Uh, so we can go to the cemetery or the rain residence. I like this, that we sort of just drive around on the road and it seems like we pick where we're going on the road. That's, that's a nice little mechanic. So let's go to the rain residence. But yeah, I'll definitely be playing this on the channel. I'm, I'm already really invested in it. Grandma, anybody home? Oh, it's her grandma. And it's raining. Spacebar. Hold. Display interactables in the room. Okay, yeah, so it's quite a common mechanic. Uh, let's look at nothing quite like the soothing sound of rain falling on a window. Yeah. A mere single pair of boots on display. Boy, do we live in different worlds. It really is a nice feeling when you're sort of inside and you can hear the rain outside. There's something really calming and soothing about that, isn't there? Nice black leather coat. Right up my alley. What's this? Cute red horse. It's some old Swedish thing, I think. Okay. This paint looks fresh. Grandma must have had this restored recently. Interesting. Uh, the wheelchair, was that? An old wheelchair. Not too dusty. Grandpa must have used it towards the end. Yeah, it's Joseph's then. Uh, table lamp. I guess we can go upstairs as well, but let's take a look around down here first. I like a the paintings. Phone and phone book. Ooh, looks like we can use this. I don't have anything to search for yet. Right, but we might do soon. So we'll have to remember that's there. Uh, let's look at this photo. It's a photo of this very farm from way back. It says June 12, 1910 in the corner. A wedding photo from when my grandparents married. Oh, that's nice. They look younger than I am now. Things have sure changed. They have? Some kind of winter forest scene. I've always wondered if it's supposed to be Conwell Woods or not. Right, so there's paint and so Should we go into the living room? Oh, we can double click to sort of <laughs> teleport, essentially. Um, right, let's. Oh, she's oh, here. Hello, dear. I was just wondering what took you so long. How did she beat us? Sorry, I couldn't resist taking that old wheelchair for a spin. Oh, don't give me that look. I put it back. <laughs> you haven't changed one bit. Always kidding around, just like when you were little. 
Come have a seat. We have so much to talk about. Seriously, how did she beat us home when we were on the motorbike? So, now, tell me about your life in the city. Oh, there's not much to tell. I'm going to school for journalism. It's my second year. I ride a motorcycle in case you missed it there out front. Ah, oh, that's right. Just like your father. Yeah, I suppose. I must ask, have you heard anything from your father? Anything at all? No, nothing since he bailed way back then. I expected as much. He disappeared without a trace. Suspiciously? No matter, that's ancient history. How Sharon then? Uh, tell the truth, you had her committed, committed to a mental institution. Avoid the subject, no reason to bring it up now. Um, I, f I feel like we should probably tell the truth, right? Because this is technically our grandma. Mom is... I had her committed to a place where she could get some real help. I just couldn't take it anymore. I'm sorry to hear that. In spite of everything that happened when she took you away. Yeah, about that. I'm sorry I didn't visit sooner, Grandma. Mom, she told me all these horrible lies about you and Grandpa. When I was old enough to understand what she was doing, I felt like it was much too late. It wasn't your fault, dear. You were a child. I'm just happy that you're here now. That's nice. Me too. So, what about you? How have you been doing all these years? I've been lonely ever since the accident. There's no denying that. What accident? Yeah, I was gonna say that. Goodness gracious. Of course you don't know. She took you away before it all happened. Don't know what? Mm. I will never forget that dreadful day. August 16th, 1981. It was the middle of the night when Sheriff Truman knocked on our door. He had Joseph with him. I couldn't even recognize Joseph at first. All dirty and wet with an awful blank stare on his face. Like his soul had been ripped from his body. Since that day he never spoke a word. Forever confined to that blasted wheelchair. Mm. Really? For all this time? I had no idea. It came as a shock to all of us. That's horrible, Grandma. I'm so sorry. Thank you, dear. Interesting. So that's been added to our notebook, has it? Maybe? Can we... Why do you think Grandpa suddenly left that night in 81? I haven't the faintest idea. He acted very peculiar not long before it happened, disappearing for hours at a time. At first I even suspected he was having an affair. When I asked him about it, he just said he was chasing old demons. He must have had something to do with the war. So this is interesting. I wonder if this is potentially something that we're going to have to investigate. Uh, PTSD? What did the doctors say? What about the police? Um... Maybe it was post-traumatic stress disorder? Grandpa always had a hard time showing weakness. I don't know, dear. I I'm just speculating. I didn't think too much of it at the time. Joseph was a man of few words. I'm sure he just didn't wish to burden me with it, whatever it was. Uh, what did the doctors say? What did the doctors have to say about Grandpa's condition? Persistent vegetative state. That's what they call it. I've heard it all by now. One doctor said it was a stroke. Another claimed it was a seizure. The third hack tried to sell it off as a severe infection. Wow. It's all a load of tripe. I had an MRI performed on Joseph. It's one of those state-of-the-art head scans. Yeah, I've heard of them. Yes, well, according to the scan, his brain was completely intact. They thought it was a technical problem at the time, some kind of glitch. But the result was the same after three different scans on three different machines. Eventually, they had to confess that they simply had no credible explanation for the state he was in. Huh. Hmm. And this injury just happened to occur on the very same night he mysteriously disappears? That is very weird. Indeed. I refuse to believe it was a coincidence. Uh, what about the police? What did Sheriff Truman have to say about the matter? <sighs> Not much. He said they simply found Joseph in that condition on the outskirts of town. 
The sheriff was convinced there was some kind of foul play involved, but the investigation turned up nothing. He later said that he was sorry, but that he was forced to close the case. I feel a mystery coming on. You know, I could try to find out more about this. You're welcome to try, dear. Some kind of closure would mean the world to me. So it's always like a detective okay. game then. I think I'll head over to the sheriff station for a little chat then. Would be nice to witness police doing some actual police service for once. Sure, you go ahead. Let me know if I can be of any more help. Alright then, new location added. Nice, Bye, so we can go over to the sheriff's so office long. then. All right then, guys. Well, I think that's where we're going to leave it for this one. Um, a really good start, and I'm definitely going to come back and play the rest of this on the channel, that is for sure. Um, I'll leave a link to the Steam page for this down in the description below, so that if you want to play it and you like the look of what you saw, then you can go ahead and play it as well for yourselves. Uh, but that is going to do it for this one. So as always, thank you very much for watching. A big thank you to my patrons, Arcades Games, Wayne, Nate, and Terminally Nerdy, and Paul from the Phantom Fellows for all the support. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, hit on that like button, and I will see you all next time.